In this video I will ask Professor Paul Hazel from the University of New South Wales Canberra about the limits of armor design and then also look a bit into light armor. I hope you enjoy this episode. So one question that came up for me and I, I have no idea what the answer is. Did armor design reach its limits? Because nowadays we see a lot of basically outdated tanks. I mean, they were designed ages ago. I mean, of course, the Germans updated the Leopard to the A7V and something. So I don't know exactly if the armor was heavily updated or not, or some internals, and also what is classified or not. So what is your perspective as one of basically at the spear tip of the research in this area? Well, it, it's, it's quite a difficult question to answer because, um, you know, you can't always predict where the next step change in innovation is going to happen. Um, so, so like, for example, I always tell my students about the, uh, the, the, in the 1960s, there really was a sort of a renaissance in material science. And the, and the reason for that was principally down to two things. It was one of which was John F. Kennedy's aspirations to put a man on the moon before the decade was out. And the other, of course, was the Cold War. You know, there was, uh, and then um, to a lesser extent, of course, Vietnam um, became a sort of a, a fairly hot conflict, which needed some innovation to, um, to help with uh, the U.S. forces. Uh, so... Um, you, we just don't know when the next step change will might occur, and there are already there. There are you know you've everyone's heard of graphene. It was um, there's heaps of work being done on graphene at the moment. That's kind of a material that has promise um, in terms of of protection. Perhaps uh, there's new ways in which we can apply materials um, in terms of and learning from nature. And one of, the, one of my interests really is looking at biomimicry and looking at ways in which we can, can learn from, from nature to, to um, d develop um, better systems, I suppose. Uh, and, you know, we, we don't know, and there could be a whole class of materials that's just round the corner that we could discover. Uh, so, for example, Reasonably recently, we discovered um, a class of materials called a bulk metallic glass um, in the sense that it's a, a metal that hasn't got the structure of a conventional polycrystalline material. It has a quite, quite a disordered structure. And, you know, that they exhibit some interesting properties, which might, might not, you know, it could be a complete red herring, but, but could offer... Uh, um, a possibility for armor of the future. So, so we don't really know, you know, what what uh, the future holds in that that regard. And I guess also in in terms of, of threats, because there's always armor is always against the projector, and if there shows up a new projector in in that sense, or an, 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 well, yeah. it could be. Yeah. I mean, there That's could it. be something like. I mean, we all know the heat round, but maybe there's something similar, like a, a process for, for a new round as well that yeah. might develop. And then you need, I guess, new armor design for that as well. That's it. Yeah. So, and your research um, is in, in the area of light armor, if I remember correctly, from your homepage? Yes, yes. So, so we, we kind of, we look at, uh, lightweight armor systems, but also um, from that flows a whole kind of plethora of research avenues. So lightweight armor would, um, it, the, the, the main, I suppose the, the main demarcation is between light armor and heavy armor. And when we talk about heavy armor, we're talking about heavy vehicles, uh, heavy structures, so tanks and, and that's that type of thing. Um, so, so lightweight uh, armored vehicles. You think of a light armored vehicle. Um, the armor that you would uh, put on that would generally be able to protect against small arms ammunition type um, threat. So, so five, five, six, 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 six,
a light vehicle would be a Humvee, but a brand Humvee new would could be, be a, a heavy. Three, yeah, it could be a a lav, could be a striker. You know, it could be um, an FV four three two. Could be a warrior. Even I mean, warrior is kind of probably at the top end of that. The Bradley, the boxers. You know, all those um, sort of fairly heavy um, vehicles. But we would still want to protect them against small arms fire, and that's kind of where we would be using lightweight armor structures and the reason why we want them to be lightweight is because you want them to in the vehicle sense you want to maintain your mobility um, from the personnel sense you want to maintain your mobility and your comfort and your um, tenacity i mean you want to be able to keep moving around with your, your body armor on, don't you so um it's a fairly broad term if you don't mind me saying i suppose um, um that's you know what i mean by by light lightweight armor so yeah, it goes basically from from personal uh, from personal mm. protection armor to up to a Bradley. Okay, yeah, that, that's, that is, yeah. That is, that yeah, is a yeah. wide area. So basically, everything besides the main battle tank. I would say so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's that's my perspective. Others might have a different perspective, but you know, I'm talking about lightweight vehicles um, and where we we where the thought process would force you to look at lightweight materials so means of materials of low densities um so that's why for example you know your, your m113 is made from aluminium uh a 5083 um heavily strain hardened alloy which is a lightweight it's a low density material it's got a density aluminium's got density of 2700 kilograms per cubic meter um, as opposed to steel, which has a density of nearly three times that, about 7,800 kilograms per cubic meter. So um, low density materials lend themselves, not always, I mean, steel can be used in a kind of a lightweight armor construction as well, but um, the thought processes generally kind of force you down a route of looking at low density materials. So composites, um, low density materials, aluminium, magnesium, even um, uh, ceramics, uh, boron carbide, silicon carbide, aluminium oxide, um, and so on and so forth. Thank you very much for your insights and time. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Um, it was uh, good fun talking to you, Bernard. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.